Welcome to episode number two of the Retro Rewind Podcast. Oh yeah. Retro Rewind Systems Initialized. Mission Identified. The Rocketeer. 1991. Co-hosts online. Auditory Analysis online. All systems nominal. Hi everyone, I'm Francisco Ruiz, and this is the podcast where we look at movies and video games from 15 or more years ago, and if they're still worth experiencing today. Uh, I'm joined, as usual, by my co-host, Paul Powers. Paul, (laughs) (laughs) What? Did that same thing last time. Anyways, Paul, my question for you this time is, who is the best Mario Brothers villain? Oh, Bowser, hands down. All right, cool. I was just curious. Well, well, how many? Oh, you mean like Waluigi and like Well, Wario? I was going to say, I was just thinking the big three, Bowser, um, King Toad, I think is his name, and then uh, Wario. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Is it King Koopa or Bowser? Let's let the listeners decide. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> let us know, listeners. Is, it, is King Koopa and Bowser the same person or two different people? Yeah, what's what's the deal? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this usually we have a guest host, but and Christy, my wife, was going to be guest hosting this time, but unfortunately she had uh, another thing come up, and so it's just going to be the Dos Amigos. Okay. <laughs> what happened to Chevy Chase? Uh, he's he's on a Christmas vacation. Uh, oh, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <laughs> but by the time this airs it's not christmas anymore oh well, but it yeah is but now. we are recording this uh mid-december of 2012 yes it's actually 12 12 12 oh yeah that's right it is 12 12 12 apparently the last time in history that this will happen no Something for another like hundred years well no then it'll be one two one two one one two um no, it'll be two one one two one two one two. Wait, where'd you get the two one? Because a hundred years from now will be two thousand one hundred twelve. Yes, not twenty twelve. I know. So, so the date will 12 be twelve December twelve, 12. 12 day one twelve one two. That's not one one. It's not o oh, one two. Well, it is, but it's two. Th- Never mind. Okay. Let's get on <laughs> with the show. It'll happen again in a hundred years. You know what? When they move on to star dates, all this won't matter. So yes. let's just move on. How about let's go ahead and get in this show. Uh, tell us what we're going to be doing this time around. Uh, we're going to have our usual new tube segment. As you heard in the intro, we're going to be doing a roundtable discussion on the Rocketeer. The Rocket who? The Rocketeer. <laughs> All right, we'll give you a final verdict on whether you should watch it or not and wrap up the show with announcements and feedback. Yeah, though we don't, didn't get any feedback, so it'll just be announcements this time. Oh, yeah, well, put your mic closer to the speaker and you can get some feedback. <laughs> We're just full of puns today. All right, let's get to the new YouTube segment. Tip. New tube systems engaged. All right, Paul, what is your new tube for today? I don't have Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that that old 90s video game? That's You Don't Know Jack. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, um, but I did enjoy the video you posted, uh, which could be found on the Facebook about the old uh, uh, Nintendo games and the, oh, yeah, yeah. the with the sound effects on there. So this is just a reminder to the listeners to check out our, our Facebook page. And the links that we share on there, because some are some really cool things. Yeah, totally. And that's at uh, facebook.com slash retro rewind podcast. And we'll mention that again at the end of the show. My, uh, oh, and I also want to say that video is uh, made by the website polygon.com, which is a relatively new gaming site or gaming reviews, features, things like that. Oh, is that like Game Informer or that kind of thing? It's similar, yeah. Oh, it wants to be. 
Well, I'd say it's better, but anyways. Oh, wow. Oh, got to check that out. <laughs> yeah, do that. All right. So what is your new tube segment? My new tube for uh, this time is this game called uh, Triple Town. Have you heard of that game? Not. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's a game that I found through Google+. Plus. You, They have several games there. Essentially what it is is – Whoa, whoa, whoa. What platform? Is this on the computer or – Yeah, yeah. So okay. it's like similar to a game that you'd play in Facebook. It's like Flash-based play, flash and you say you want to associate my account with this game. It's similar to that except Google+. Plus. So okay. you, you find, look through the games for Triple Town. You find this one. And there's a little bear icon. Or a stylized bear. Anyways, what the game is is you you get a, essentially this little uh, plot of land, uh, and it's random each time. And you're try- and then you get a random item each turn, and it could be a bush, a uh, grass, a tree. Mostly, it's grass. But then so it's you. Like farm bill. Well, wait, wait till okay. I get to the punchline. What you're trying to do with these items is you place them to connect three or more together. And when you do that, they combine to um, create the next level up of item. Oh, <laughs> like a one-up, like a green mushroom appears? <laughs> no, not that kind of one-up. Like, oh. let's say you take three grasses and you put them together. Then they combine to be one bush. Three bushes combined to be a tree. Three trees combined to be a house. And it just goes on and on from there. Yes, good job. Kind the of moon, and the planet and three galaxies equals one universe and three universes equals wars between superheroes. Yeah, I've never gotten it up that high, but sure. Yeah. All right. I'd like to think that that's what happens. Anyways, it's pretty fun. It's just a fun, uh, like, you don't have to invest a whole lot of time, like big chunks of time. You can do it in like 15-minute chunks or so. And then um, when you finish, like you've run out of all the spaces, you filled them in, then you, you're you done. It creates uh, – you get a score. And then you go back to your main encampment where you build up your sort of uh, capital city that has different different – Items that you group together in threes to create different things like factories and um, defenses and farms and things like that. Oh, so it's a a good time waster. Yeah, but it it can be a time waster. But you don't – if you can only like – you only have a few minutes in the morning before you go work or on your lunch, it's really good because you you can – you can have closure to – the game or each time you play that's cool yeah and what's it called again triple town triple town yep beware the bears okay (laughs) i guess that's a game reference to that game because little bears will keep you from building stuff oh yeah oh anyway i like to say anyway Let's move on to our roundtable discussion of The Rocketeer. Alert. Alert. Target located. Spoilers. Incoming. Engaging retro rewind reactor. To some, it was the fulfillment of a dream. To others, it was an instrument of destruction. A creation that could change the course of history. It was stolen from my factory. Where's the package? This is the FBI! What do we tell the president? Tell me exactly why this merchandise so important to the feds. It's a rocket. A rocket? Ow! What? What's the matter? I don't know. There's something under the seat. Oh, my. What are we got here? What are you supposed to do? Is it a bomb or something? No. I wouldn't touch that if I were you. How do I look? 
Like a hood ornament. Stand clear. What was that? Are you trying to kill yourself? I like it. Uh oh, we got company. You steer, I'll push. Well, what? I will not rock it, Eddie. Not next week, not tomorrow. Now, keep your eyes open for this dame. Jenny's in trouble. <laughs> They're working for a Nazi agent. With an army equipped with these, you could rule the world. Cliff! You touch one hair on her head, I swear out. <laughs> Shoot him! We've got the girl. The rocket will come to us. I love her, Peeve. Does she know that? She's gonna find out. Let him have it! Hand over the rockets! Go get him, kid. The Rocketeer is a movie from 1991. It was d- directed by Joe Johnson. Do you know uh, what else Joe Johnson has directed recently, Paul? Oh, recently. Um, yes. He actually did, which is in the same flavor, it, uh, Captain America. He did. The first Avenger. Mm-hmm. The first Avenger. Which, just brief side note, did you know that was just called the first Avenger in other countries? Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. Because apparently people don't like us in other countries. Oh, that's right, because he's Captain America. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what did they call him in there? I think in the movie they still called him that, but the like movie posters and marking was just the first Avenger. Oh, uh, okay. So people would go see it not knowing they were supporting America. <laughs> Anyways, the writers you, were... Uh, you know what else he directed, though? Didn't he direct one of the Pixar movies? Uh, maybe, but just before he directed this movie, he directed uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. What? Yeah. I did not know that. Jeez, that's crazy. <laughs> A future Retro Rewind episode, I'm sure. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, the writers for The Rocketeer were uh, Dave Stevens, uh, wrote the graphic novel, uh, and then Danny Bilson uh, did some story treatment. I'm just reading off IMDb, you know, the greatest resource for movies. <laughs> <laughs> and it stars uh, Billy Campbell, Jennifer Conley, uh, Alan Arkin, which he was fun, uh, Timothy Dalton, and in the role of Howard Hughes, John Polito. No, that's not no. right. Oh, Terry O'Quinn from yes. Lost Fame of most recent. Right. Yes. <laughs> that was fun to see him. I totally did not. It was a great shock when he, when he came on screen. I was like, oh, my gosh, it's Locke. <laughs> that's so cool. He's in a lot of movies. You oh, know, totally. And older. In his younger days, mm-hmm. his older days, his younger days, his previous days. Both. I remember m- most vividly from the Cutting Edge. Really, he's in that. Mm-hmm. That's he's the dad way? of the the girl skater. Oh wow! Yeah, I didn't realize that. I think he's also in Tombstone. If I remember correctly, hmm. I don't recall. Uh, anyways, the Rocketeer. Moving on is in the action adventure family sci fi genre. Uh, and it had a budget of forty million, and it grossed forty six million in the USA. Wow! Yep, they were actually well. Oh, I don't want to do too, anyway. <laughs> well, go ahead, why don't you go ahead and give us the synopsis of the movie, Paul? Okay, here's the well. Uh, the discovery of a top secret jetpack hurls test pilot Cliff Seeker. Secord into a daring adventure of mystery, suspense, and intrigue. Mm-hmm. Cliff encounters an assortment of ruthless villains led by a Hollywood screen star who's a secret Nazi spy, dun, a.k.a. Dun, dun. Timothy Dalton. Didn't he also play another spy, like, 
007 or something like that. Yes, he was a James Bond. All right. He's a little spy. <laughs> anyway, with the help of his actress girlfriend, the young pilot battles enormous odds to defeat his foes who are anxious to use the device in an evil plan to rule the world. The dangerous mission transforms this ordinary... Sorry, the reading on that is all off. Jeez. Let me try that one more time, Mr. Director. The dangerous mission transforms this ordinary young man into an extraordinary hero. That's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the like the closing music there. Um, do, do, but, do, do. Um... <laughs> all right. Let's go ahead and. Uh, kick us off here what what you remember let's talk about the themes in the story of the rocketeer first but what you remember in terms of the theme or story the theme or the story um set in the uh i would say around the early 30 1930s 1938 uh, yeah i was pretty close <laughs> good job yeah um so I remember that it being set back at that time, um, going just the fun idea of finding a rocket, battling spies, winning the girl. Uh, yeah, so that's what I remember. Fun action, uh, that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. well, I wouldn't say action, action, like high action. It's yeah. not like uh, wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Kind of thing. <laughs> this is probably the wrong reference, but a little bit. <laughs> but it's not consistent. But it, it is a fun ride. Mm -hmm. So that's what you remembered. How does that compare to re, -re, -re watching it? A lot of it was the same. Um, it wasn't this over the top, like oh wow, you it's this mind blowing thing. But it was a fun uh, journey mm -hmm. as this. You know, battling, trying to outwit the spies, and uh, trying to get the girl. Okay, I I found it. I uh -huh. thought this. <laughs> well, I'm gonna comment on that, and then I'll go into what I remembered, and uh, and how it compares. So you said that. I I totally agree that it it's sort of. Uh, had moments of really good action, but it sort of wasn't consistent and it wasn't like diehard action. It was more just like, oh, fun, like rescue adventure action. Yeah. Yeah. I But I did not find that um, overall, actually, let me go ahead and just, <laughs> well, let's see. Don't spoil it. You... <laughs> I'm just sorry. I'm totally reading my notes to see. I'm going to go ahead and go into what I remembered because this it sort of leads into it. I remember getting – one of the things I remember about the story is – and I don't know if I was just watching it too many times when I was younger. I saw this movie probably when, when it came out. So I was 10. Okay. And I remember seeing it several times, but I sort of just got bored with it. And – Wait, bored with it back when you were younger or bored with yeah. it now? Bored with it okay. back when I was younger. So oh, okay. I was thinking, you know what? And I don't know if it's just the story or, or what about it sort of just bored me if it was yeah. just watching it too many times. Oh, okay. Uh, so on rewatching it, I was thinking, okay, so it's been a long time. Like I haven't seen it forever. Uh, and so I probably won't be as bored. But I – Still bored. I was still bored as it it's it's went slow on. moving. Yeah. It it is, and the the action scenes for its time are, and we'll talk about this more in the visuals. But I, I thought they were good, and I was I was engaged in them. But yeah, just overall, I felt the story of him finding the rocket and then trying to keep it away from the bad guys, and then using it. I felt like he could have done a lot more with the rocket or the rocket him as a rocketeer could mm -hmm. have had a lot more adventuring than mm, what yeah. transpired. Let me, um, <clears throat> I want to, uh, 
take what you said and go into a, a tail dive and then pull up again. Sweet. Uh, nice reference yeah. to the movie. <laughs> Basically, speaking of story, I, I get what you're saying there. Um, let me take you back. About a month or two ago, I was listening to another podcast, uh, Kevin, one of Kevin Smith's podcasts on uh, the Smodco Network. Mm-hmm. Uh, podcast listeners he has a, a podcast called uh smoothie makers okay and it's the fourth episode and it basically he talks it's the 20th anniversary of the rocketeer and oh, okay. he's he's hosting the panel oh wow okay and, you know uh and so a lot of information that i I, I found out there. I highly recommend anybody listening to it. Um, th- there's a, a couple words in there that maybe not safe for uh, little ears, but mm. overall, general, it's it's uh, I I recommend it, um, be, especially if you're interested in the Rocketeer. Okay. One of the one of the things uh, that they talk about is that the original story that you were talking about was written uh, by the guy. Who created the Rocketeer, the original comic book, mm-hmm. um, and he also drew it and everything. That uh, was again uh, Dave Dave Stevens. Dave Stevens, yes, right. So, and and they said on the podcast that basically they took his, I think it was like five comic books miniseries, five mm-hmm. or six miniseries. I think it was five, and they built the movie off of that. A lot of the the movies based on that. Mm-hmm. So what I did is I went on eBay and I, I, uh, got a trade paperback for under $10 of the whole collection of it. Oh, nice. To read it. And then, then I wanted to watch it again after reading it. And then this came up and it was like, Oh, cool. We can watch it for the podcast. And mm-hmm. So I read it before watching it. And the whole idea, the story of, you know, there's the, the Nazis who have this rocket and the FBI's after them, they hide it in the plane, you know, and then uh, Cliff takes it and, and is trying to, that whole segment is mm-hmm. from the comic books. Yeah. Okay. So, but if you, I'm always a big fan of the books, usually more than the movies, like, Oh, the book's better. Right. Sure. But this is one of the case where the book is fine. But the movie brings it up like a whole nother level. Like really? you have that, and then they really expand on it. Huh. So um, there's a couple little differences. Like the girl is actually um, in the comic books. It's actually the pinup star Betty Page. Okay. And uh, for people who know that, and basically she's this uh, not a Hollywood actress, but this model, mm-hmm. and uh, his. The, his uh, whole thing, his motivation in the comic books is to, just to try to win her over. Oh, okay. To, to win the money. At first, and what I liked about the movie, it's like he's trying to, uh, first they're struggling to make money just to make ends meet, you know, mm-hmm. for the airplane. Yeah. But in the comic books, it's always to impress her, to make money to impress her. So I like oh. a little more, you know, let's make this a little more real. You yeah. Yeah. So I appreciate the story a little uh, with the movie a little more after reading the comic book because it hmm. just brought it up to another level. So that's I know cool. It's a long-winded. <laughs> just, it's a it's a slide. It didn't pull up very fast. That's okay. My uh, analogy, you know, in the soaringness, but I liked the story better after reading the original book. Yeah, no, that's. So, I totally get that. Wow, that's. It certainly sounds like it gave you good perspective. Yeah. Cool. Was there anything else, uh, any like theme that stood out to you or anything else um, that you had remembered? The theme song? No, no, just the theme, (laughs) a theme of the movie. Like, for instance, I'll go ahead and take uh, the, I thought the, I remember liking the whole idea of, have you heard the phrase, the enemy of my enemy is my friend? Yes. Okay. So that kept, when I was getting ready to watch the movie again, I kept going back to thinking about how it was so cool at the end that the FBI and uh, 
the mobster gangster guys sort of team up against the Nazis. Yeah. I, I, I there's something about that that's re- I don't know, it just totally speaks to me that you can find common ground against a greater foe no matter who you are. <laughs> uh so I really like that theme. And it and that's still held up. That is still fun to see that again. Uh but uh I thought one thing that I had forgotten about was this whole trope of uh and sort of going back it's similar to Die Hard in that you know the tall uh Nazi got backbreaker guy Oh yeah, you know the German yeah, the, ver- the Nazi version of Bane. Yeah, kind of looks like a character from Dick Tracy. Yeah, but... it totally did. Um, yeah. So I thought it was interesting how you thought he killed. We thought he died, but then he comes back at the end. Um, I had forgotten about that, but in rewatching it, it is just interesting seeing that that's used even in other movies. Oh. No, did you think he died when the house got shot up? When do you think he died? Um, I, f- I, I don't... thought there was an explosion, and then he died. Like, well, I know he end, died, died at on the blimp. Right, that was the explosion that I know of. Yeah. I thought there was some other part. Maybe I don't remember him house. dying. I don't know. It. All right, we'll have to rewatch it. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for you know what? For whatever reason, this movie m- had trouble gain staying on my RAM of my head. What do you mean? Like retaining what happened for whatever reason. I would think that I would have retained more of it, but uh, I didn't for whatever reason. All right. Do you remember him uh, flying through the air and then like skipping through the water and landing in the mud? I remember watching that when I watched it recently. I forgot. I had forgotten about that in from what, from when I first watched it. Yeah. All right. Just wondering what stuck in your memory. then. (laughs) Well, (laughs) other things stuck in, but those are, those are like the themes or story elements. Yeah. Yeah. Were were there any others that you wanted to bring up? Um, I remember Jennifer Conley. But <laughs> well, speaking of her, let's go ahead and go into characters because it sounds like okay. that's where you want to go. <laughs> that's so what, that's what, what I remember. Just Jennifer Conley. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that was the only person I remember, like that I could say, "Oh yeah, Jennifer Conley was in that." Yeah, I would not have been able to say Billy Campbell or Alan Arkin, even though I liked Alan Arkin. Um, or Timothy Dalton. Yeah, I could have. I might have been able to. I didn't realize Timothy Dalton. It's one of those characters where I recognize him a lot, but I don't necessarily know his name is Timothy Dalton. Okay. So I probably could have said uh, it's this British actor. I think he was a James Bond. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I totally get that. Oh, did you know this was uh, Billy? What's his name? Campbell. Yeah, this was his first movie. And his last. Now, I don't really remember him in other things. <laughs> exactly. But I thought he did really good for a first-time actor in the lead role. You know, I I thought he was fine. Oh, um, <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Here's the th- Actually, let me go back. Him acting was fine. But in terms of the character... I and I didn't really have a memory of his of the character in general, but I thought it was he was very one dimensional the character. And I, again, I am not quite sure how this compares with the comic book, though it sounds like the movie was at a better level than the comic or the graphic novel, excuse me. Mm-hmm. But I guess he just didn't seem to have much of an arc. He wanted to um, fly in the the what's it called the nationals of mm-hmm. the fly and race things and he wants the girl the whole way but you would think i i almost want to say it seems like if you found this rocket thing um yeah it's i mean kind of going to what you said his motivation is just to get the girl and earn enough money to get the 
back into doing what he's doing. Whereas if you think you find something like that, it's almost like I expect you to do more with it <laughs> than just yeah, save a clown no, out of a plane. It's very similar to the comic book oh, yeah. as far as, as I, there isn't much of a story arc for his character mm-hmm. as far as his learning from anything or how is he different because in the end he doesn't have the rocket. Yeah, yeah, he just has a plane, but and the girl, but he, he he had those things at the beginning, which is weird. It's almost like it was a reverse arc. It's he started off. It, you know what it was? It was like in video games where it's like a sequel, and you start off with all your items, and then you lose them all because of some stupid thing in the beginning, and you go through the whole game again and find them all, just to get to the okay. Point. I think there's and games so, like that. So maybe it's about the journey, which you thought was boring. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is it. Okay. Summed up. Um, uh, what's interesting, though, something that's... Uh, I rem- remember really hating Timothy Dalton, the bad guy's character, when oh, I really? watched this younger, yeah, I he just like I he just didn't hair. like him, yeah. But rewatching him, and then probably this probably has more to do with me just being an adult. But I actually enjoyed his performance the most. I thought he was really interesting and just what he did. Um, interesting, yeah. What did you think about about him I, as the bad guy? I thought he was fine both times. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I wanted him to like. Okay, is he really? Falling for the girl? I don't think so. You know yeah. what I mean? I yeah, really yeah, yeah. wanted more from him, but not from Timothy Dalton's performance, but again from the character. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Almost like he it seems like it started going in the direction of, oh, I'm just gonna use you to get to the rocket, but I actually start having feelings for you. I wish they had expounded on that more and carried it out more because Yeah, but even then that's so overdone. You know what Even I mean? Even back then? I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, of course, the villain falls for the girl. And then, it, it, you no, know. you're right. Yeah, that is overdone. So it probably would have just been like, oh, I've seen this before. Why are they doing it again? Yeah. Yeah. All right. But I, I think what, so yeah, I think what they did with that part of the relationship was fine. But it didn't. It didn't have the same tension that a true love triangle would have, and if that's what they were going for. Now that would be more interesting. Yeah, I, I'm not saying that we should. We're here to pick things apart and make it more interesting, but well, let's do a, that. <laughs> but if it wasn't like a Nazi spy, but let's well, let's say he was a Nazi spy, but he had a good heart or whatever, oh, something, yeah. to make, something to make him likable. Mm-hmm. Or maybe he was forced to because they were, you know, going to kill his family or whatever. Mm-hmm. And there really was a, a love triangle there. That would be interesting. That, you know what I mean? Yeah, that totally would be interesting. Have you ever seen the movie? Um, I bet you haven't. And even if you did, you probably would make fun of me. Um, Shining Through with Michael Douglas and Melanie Griffith. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Okay. I would recommend at least seeing it. You may not be a favorite since... I'm a somewhere in time fan, and uh... oh, and I'm not. And so, wait, wait does this have to go with time travel? And no, not it has nothing to do with time coins? travel. No, it's it's a it's a period movie in um, that takes place in Germany during World War II. Uh, I I think it's pre-war, pre-America joining the war. Um, but they're still sending spies and they send Melanie Griffith as a spy. And early on, there's a love triangle between her and a semi good hearted Nazi, um, commander. And then she also has, has a burgeoning relationship, burgeoning, budding relationship with, uh, the the sort of CIA her boss in the CIA or her handler in the CIA so there's an interesting triangle there okay um so I'd recommend it okay cool uh oh I was just giving an example of a similar time period where that type of thing could work or sure. where another movie that's done it I think successfully 
All right. What do you think about the visual slash audio? Did you enjoy the the music? I had more to talk about the characters, but all oh, right. Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought you were done because you were talking about another movie. So I thought, no, okay, no. okay, I still have things ahead. to go through. Oh my gosh, Paul just wants to get this show done. Wait, you got a hot date? You and Valerie have a hot date tonight? Well, <laughs> <laughs> what better to do on a Wednesday night? Yeah. Um. So I thought. The I had had you did you remember going back a little bit to the tall bad guy? I don't remember what his name was. Did you remember he was in this movie? Um, y- yes, Not the actor, but just that character. Yeah, yeah, because I always thought he was kind of a uh, strange mm-hmm. like one of these things doesn't belong here. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. He's kind of like a leftover from Dick Tracy. Exactly. It's like, well, it worked here. Let's put him in here. Yeah. It was just a little bit too over the top. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so he stood out to me. Yeah. I had completely forgotten about him. I had no memory that there was a character like that in this movie. So that was interesting to see him again. I thought he was, just very much the henchman, the you know overpowered henchman. Yeah, and he was. Yeah. What did oh, you? Th- I, I'll tell oh. you what though. When those guys came in and 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 started uh, roughing up the bulldog cafe, mm-hmm. where they're like putting uh, what PB's head to the 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 um, counter, the grill, and all that, oh, yeah, and yeah. they were like, and and throwing and breaking things. I was like. That got really intense for me. It was oh, really? Like, yeah. Now, Maybe I just caught up on all it. No, no, that's awesome. But I, I didn't remember it being so intense as a kid. But this time watching it, I was like, man, they're really gonna, they're trying to fry his head off. Yeah, right. This, this is not the stuff of a kids movie. Oh my gosh. But they're okay. Did you find though that? It was hard to distinguish between the FBI agents and the gangsters. Like in that scene you're talking about, I didn't know yeah. if those were the feds or the gangsters that were running yeah, up the not, place. Yeah, not. And I think I have, I suspected that was done intentionally. Oh, really? Because I think gangsters don't want to set themselves apart too much they want to be looked at as an authority figure someone Mm -hmm. to listen to Mm -hmm. but if they if they wear like gangster badges or something (laughs) then people are going to be like okay call the cops you know what i mean so they want to look they want to blend in with the authority so what best way to do that you know what i mean yeah but But, just from a movie watcher i wish they they could have still had the gangsters in suits but maybe just a different color suit like black or navy blue just so i mean because none of the actors were um or or even their character roles were um distinguished enough for me to know oh yeah these are the the mobsters these are the fbi right and i thought but i thought it helped add to the mystery okay are the who which you know which guys are these now you know it's it was mysterious i just found it more confusing than mysterious Uh, but yeah that's me yeah 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 (laughs) oh i'm curious what did you think of uh well you you said that was really cool to see terry o'quinn did you have any? Yeah. So you forgot that he was in the movie? Yeah, I remember that he played Howard Hughes. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember the Howard Hughes character, but I totally forgot it was played by John Locke. Okay. Or, I mean, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I thought he did a good, good job there. It was really interesting seeing what he was, just what he did with that character, and he was definitely engaging. I But... I don't think it's like a stellar performance. It's like, oh, have you seen him in this role? He's magnificent. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I just yeah. thought, you know, he, it was just cool to see him, who I know from another character, as another character in that role. Mm-hmm. Good point. Uh, similarly, 
Well, kind of. I thought it was interesting uh, to see Alan Arkin again. I had forgotten that he was in that movie, and he played the mechanic. Yes. And the thing I remember him most notably from in is Little Miss Sunshine. So this is quite oh, the yeah. di- different role. Um, and he's way younger in this. But I thought it was cool to have this sort of uh, mechanic character. What are you doing? I'm trying to see how long. You, I'm making faces trying to see how long you can keep it together. Oh, God. Good job, co-host. Way to get us on track. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> so it's good to see him in a different role. Yeah. Yeah, it's it is fun. And I thought he did. It's really cool how, just how much he wanted to, you know, make the rocket as good as it could be. Even to the end of the movie, he's like, oh, this is, look at this. We could enhance it this way. Yeah, and, he, I thought he did a good job for training an engineer. Yeah. And his wisecracks were some of the funniest, I thought. Sure. Agreed. And oh. what? Oh, I was going to – I should have brought up this when you mentioned Jennifer Connelly, but it was at the end of my notes, so I didn't – Oh, okay. Say. Saving the best for last. Yeah, exactly. What? <laughs> so, well, let me ask you this. Why do you think it was that you remember Jennifer Connelly? Um – because to me, when I think of her, and like this is my favorite role of hers. Oh, really? I enjoyed, yeah, I enjoyed her in Labyrinth and all this, but mm-hmm. this is like, I, when I think of Jennifer Conley, I think of how she appears here. Mm-hmm. As like as so, yeah. No, totally. I think the reason I remembered her was because of all these actors. I've seen the mid- I've seen more of her movies. Yeah, more movies with her in it than any uh, other movies with any of the other actors in it, except for uh-huh. Terry O'Quinn. But that does serve a smaller role. Yeah. So, uh, but in regards to his char- her character, and I didn't really recall this about her. I felt like she was kind of this dichotomy between being vapid and being resourceful. It seemed like she was way too into the into um the Timothy Dalton's character and then she also liked uh Cliff mm-hmm. Cliff? Yeah, yeah. Cliff Seacord. Cliff Seacord. And I don't know, she didn't seem like I I wish I had the words. She just didn't seem all that caring about either of them. I mean she did outwardly but it almost there wasn't it's almost like there was some un, un something underneath where she didn't really care about them. I don't know why I got that sense. That's well, just it, it 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 is. It's a young woman who is coming to her own she is ready to go out and see the world Mm -hmm. and so she is looking she's attracted to the hollywood and the glamour and the ritz that it provides Mm -hmm. so there's that draw there she likes this guy but she doesn't want to be committed to either she's not ready to be committed Mm -hmm. 100 percent to either because Mm -hmm. There's that big old wide world out there to be explored. Sure. That she is ready and ripe for. So Mm -hmm. I think that's why there's that little bit of disconnect in that. Mm Mm-hmm. That makes sense. That does make sense. Okay. Well, and I I thought was the resourceful how she uh, tricked the the, uh, Timothy Dalton's character into thinking that she was really falling for him and then with the vase. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah, good for her. Good job. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I had to say about the characters uh in terms of emotions of the movie. I again, I didn't I was sort of bored with it. But I thought the action parts were good. Yeah, okay. As you hit your computer screen, nice. Yes. 
But you wanted to talk about the visuals. What what do you remember of the visuals or the soundtrack or anything like that? Um, I had a couple friends. I actually had this one friend uh, who who loves the soundtrack, and he was listening to it, and was like, "What is this from?" He said, "The Rocketeer." I was like, "Really? I don't really." The theme song doesn't stand out like a yeah. great John Williams song or something like that. But or he a Danny likes Elfman it. song or something like that. Right. It's not like a – he considers it a classic, and mm-hmm. it's not bad, but to me it just doesn't stand out. Yeah, I remember when the the opening tile sequence was coming in or was starting. I remember thinking, oh, this is – this has the makings of a really good soundtrack. I like how this is sounding, very orchestral mm-hmm. and and deep. Yes, but I as, do like the orchestra. Yeah, but as the movie progressed, I agree. I don't remember really any themes or anything like that. That it's like, oh, I'm still humming this to myself. Yeah, the rock. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're a little confused there, but yes. Um. So that's so. Did you remember the soundtrack? No, I okay. still don't remember. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, exactly. Same for me. I remember the what I remember from visually, and this did not happen to be the case. But I remember the rockets here versus the blimp in sort of during the day, and like he's like flying toward the blimp, and he's almost like going in like evasive maneuvers with it trying to like spin around or something i don't know i think where this whole imagery comes from though is from seeing up Have you oh seen maybe up? yeah and, yeah, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. i think my my mind grafted <laughs> up on top of or transposed up on top of images from the rockets here i mean there Too is that references. yeah exactly there certainly is that uh that scene at at the end during the finale where he's uh, zoom zooming up to the, or rocketeering up to the blimp, but it's at night and he just sort of lands on it. It's nothing crazy. Right. What, what's an, what's a visual part that stood out to you? So when I watched it this last time, the special effects that they did use are outdated. You could tell they use like a blue or green screen. Some of the color isn't. Um, yeah, it's it's the you know the rocketeer is looks like it's cut out. Mm-hmm. You know, placed down there. Uh, but I was really impressed how many uh, non special effects that they used so with mm-hmm. you know him landing and taking off. That mm-hmm. was, which is not something that you'd see these days. There's a lot of shots they did that were real. Um, Back, you know that they used back then that looked really good. Yeah. So I was impressed with those. Totally. One that sticks out in my mind is the dummy where they're testing it. Yeah. I think that was all real. I mean, it looked completely real. <laughs> so. And yeah, I think other times where he's taking off and and whatnot. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you remember? I had this memory of the rocket being a single engine. And it turned out to be oh. two engines. Oh. Did you have any what, weird like memories like that where it I will tell you this, in the comic books, the original one, it is a single uh exhaust, like really? it's a single rocket, but in the movies it's a double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there if you huh. go into comic book stores or see something, you may see some rocketeer models okay. or statues. And one that's one of the ways you can tell the difference between the movie version and the comic book. It's like that's the really the only difference is I mean the helmet's the same mm-hmm. and like the, the jacket that he wears and the pants, everything else is the same mm-hmm. except um the now that I'm looking at the the cover of the movie, um in the poster on the upper right, it looks like the engine that he's, it's like kind of painted on. There's um, a glare. Yeah, but it looks like that might be a single. It does. A single one there, but he, it, it is, it's a two pack. I don't know what you yeah. call it, but in the movie, in the comic books, it's a single one. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, maybe that's pop, just pop culture images have been, Composited over my 
and memories. Well, good for you. It worked this time, but it didn't work for us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh my goodness. I, I agree though. Going back to what you're saying about uh, the blue screen work, I thought um, the, comp- the compositing was okay. Some scenes it was good. Others it was like, yeah, that coloring's not off. And it's because we're so used to seeing things so seamless nowadays. It's totally like, oh, that's not, he wasn't really there. Yeah. And it, when he landed in the water, when he was going around and he skipped through the water mm-hmm. and landed in the mud, the animation of him in the water looked total. It's like, okay, that, no, they needed better reference for that. <laughs> oh, I didn't even pick up on that. I thought that looked fine. So oh, that's interesting. Okay. Though you ha- your background in animation probably helps you see stuff like that. Yeah. I would yeah. have did it a little bit differently, tweaked it a little bit, but it was still a fun movie. Yeah, totally. All right. Anything else you want to share about the audio or visuals before we go to the moment of truth? I don't know Let's why I called it the moment, moment of truth. truth. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. <laughs> moment of truth. <laughs> All righty. Paul, is The Rocketeer a classic or second class? Well, of course, The Rocketeer is a classic. <laughs> okay, oh, why, why don't you tell us? Why don't you tell us why? What what makes a classic to you? What makes a classic to me? Okay, if I was sitting around with a group of friends, they're just like, "Hey, let's put on a movie." And someone suggested this movie mm-hmm. or a movie I would consider a classic. I would say yes. Let's let's do it. I'm up for rewatching it. Let's do it. It's a fun flick. Okay. So the Rocketeer for me is a fun fun flick. It's um, it is slow moving, but I I like it. I think it's a classic. Cool. For me, I would have to say the Rocketeer is second class. Again. Again. <laughs> Again. I didn't rate it before. No, the the, the second I episode. Know, know, You're two for two, but it's so I am I. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I could have said the same thing to you. And how I come to my my how I judge a movie as classic or, or second class is whether I, I think, think of rocket. what? You don't like the Rocketeer? I thought it was fine. But it would not be a movie that I, I when Sophia's eight, nine, ten, saying, you know what, I think we should watch this because I really love this as a kid, and I think you're going to really love it and enjoy it and want and just quote it or have fun with it. I don't think she'd have that much fun with it. It's not quotable. Well, that's part of it, yeah. But just, yeah, overall, it it does not provide the type of enjoyment a movie like Star Wars would. Or, well, now you're you're talking like the best of the best. I mean, you you can't always hit a home run. Well, sure, but that's why not all movies are not all movies are classics for exactly that reason. You can't always hit a home run. All right. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, no. What commentary would you like? What do you mean? Well, it sounded like you were going to ask a question for me to sort of expound on my reading. Yeah, but then I, I you answered it with uh, when you said she was like eight or nine. So the the movie would have to be age appropriate Yeah, for her yeah. to fully enjoy it. Oh, okay. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, All I, right. I would not expect uh, her to be 18 and say, hey, hey, youngin. I don't know why he calls you young. Because <laughs> you're old. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, my gosh. oh, my gosh. That's me at 48, essentially. Oh, my gosh. Anyways, um, yeah, I'd be anyway. when she's between A and 10, I would think. Okay. But so are there more than – so are there more than just like five classic movies out there? I – you know what? I here's what I'll do. I will tell you I will give you a a rundown of classic movies that are 15 years or older that we won't be doing anytime soon because we've seen them too recently. All right? All right. Princess Bride. I think okay. so that's a 
toward the top of the list. Back to the Future. Okay. Um, let me think. Star Wars, the the original series of Star Wars movies. Okay. Indiana uh, Jones. Indiana Jones. Um, let's see what else. What else? What else? A lot of the Disney movies like Aladdin, wow. Beauty and the Beast. Um, Rocketeer. <laughs> it was made by Disney. So the, those are my, uh, those are just a few of what I would consider classics. That's uh, the end of our round table. Uh, so we have one classic from Paul and one second class. So because we don't have a guest host, we are tied this week. Oh. So you can't get outvoted this week. Exactly. Ha 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 ha. Let's go ahead and move into our announcements and feedback. Comsat online. Receiving incoming transmission. So we don't have any feedback this week. Uh, but if you, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, please send us your put, feedback. What, put Paul? your microphone next to the speaker and record it and send you, it to Francisco. And that joke. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Where can they send that to? Francisco at no feedback at retrorewindpodcast dot com. <laughs> what? We're just gonna get nothing but. But recordings of feedback at, at that feedback email. <laughs> That's not what feedback only means. There's multiple <laughs> definitions. Oh my goodness! All right, so the email email your feedback to feedback at retrorewindpodcast dot com. <laughs> you can also <laughs> like us on our Facebook page, which is facebook dot com. Oh, it's, it's a- the email address is a dot com. Yeah. It's not a Gmail. No. I, oh, okay. Turns out, if you uh, uh, listeners, if you did try uh, to email retro rewind podcast at gmail dot com, that email I had not checked was already taken by uh, this. Apparently, someone had a podcast called Retro Rewind Podcast long ago. It has since vanished. Uh, but their Gmail still exists. Oh. <clears throat> so, so I went they, ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I went ahead and bought the domain name, retrorewindpodcast.com. You can find us there. We don't, uh, actually, by the time this goes up, we'll have our uh, episode one for Superman 3, in case you missed that. And uh, we may even have some other posts. So are you going to go back and edit episode one to the correct email address? No, I put a note in, in the post. All right. Anyways. That'd be funny. Be sure to email us at feedback at retrowewritepodcast.com. <laughs> oh, thank you for sticking us uh, through this last segment, listeners. Even though it's gotten a little bit of zany. Paul's hair is going crazy. Um Oh, yeah, send us an email at the uh, feedback at retrorewindpodcast dot com. Also, if you'd like to support the show, the best way to support the show would be just to tell your friends. Say, hey, I'm listening to this podcast where they talk sort of nostalgia about old movies, and they tell they say whether they think you should watch this movie or not. I really enjoy it. I think you would enjoy it too. Just share it with your friends. Retro Rewind Pod. Retro Rewind Podcast.com. Retro Rewind. Yes, it's fun to say. It. <laughs> it is fun to say. Retro Rewind. Oh, my goodness. Uh, another way you could support us is by uh, leaving us a rating and a review on iTunes. That helps us get noticed on iTunes and just is another way to support the show. Yes. With that in mind, Paul. Is there anything you'd like to uh, plug this week? Um, Not this week, but you can contact me through the Retro Rewind Facebook and uh, friend me on there or message me on there. Uh, Or go to uh, Twitter. At Twitter, I am at pauljpowers.com. Is there a .com at the end of that? Sorry, there is not. (laughs) 
I have a web page called pauljpowers.com, oh, okay. um, but it isn't date. It's it's outdated. I'm looking to revamp it soon, but okay. that's not a way to contact me. Gotcha. So the way to contact me would be at Paul J. Powers for Twitter. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, I don't really have anything new to plug. Uh, I'd still love if you go and check out my show, dadsvoicepodcast.com, especially if you're a dad or soon-to-be dad. And uh, you can contact me also through the, the Facebook page or uh, through the email or through funny monster faces that Paul's making at me. <laughs> no, not through there. Uh, but those would be the ideal p- ways to contact me. All right, Paul, what are we going to be doing next time? Uh, next time we will be rewinding to 1987, just two years after Marty came back, with <laughs> nice. the Masters of the Universe. Email us your wait. memories of the – what? I was going to say, you- wait, isn't Masters of the Universe a cartoon? Um, it's a movie starring Dolph, what's his name, that fought Rocky in the fourth <laughs> one. Um, but it, 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 Mr. Strickland is in there. <laughs> uh, so, so it was a cartoon, but they made a movie of it. Well, yes, but it was also toys and all that good stuff. Ah, but okay. yes, this is the He-Man movie, live action. Cool. Yes. From 1987. So email us your memories of the Masters of the Universe and how you would rate it to feedback at RetroRewindPodcast.com. Then we can include it as part of the show. We can finally have some feedback. That would be awesome. And we like if you send us memories, we're not going to just save it for the feedback section. We actually put that in the round table because you have a voice too. Oh, is that like a virtual machine? What? It could be part of like, so they'll be part of the round table. I remember <laughs> Courtney Cox. <laughs> it's like, says uh, weirdo at gmail.com. I don't know if it would quite be like that, but we would do our best to work it into the conversation. All right. All right, Paul. Well, thank you so much for being uh, my partner in this awesome podcast. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, Have a great day. And listeners, have a great day, month, week, (laughs) all of the above. See you next time on the Retro Rewind Podcast. Retro Rewind mission complete. Proceed to Nap Point Omega and return to base.